How long has God been around? What made God anyway? How were things made before God was born? What made God? In fact, how old is God? Now really, all of these questions can be summed up and narrowed down to one big question. Who created God? My name's Stephen, and I'm going to answer your question today from the Bible. You know, as we grow up in the world, we find ourselves in a world of created things. We learn how they work and who made them, and then we learn how the world works around us. But at some point, the thought comes through our mind, who created God? You guys asked me this question, here's the answer. If something made God, we would have to ask who created that God, and then who created that God, and that God, and that God, and that God, and on and on and on, and it would never end. But there's an assumption inside the question. An assumption is taking something for granted, or supposing something is true, but without any proof at all. It's a supposition. What's the supposition? The thing they assume in the question, who created God, is that God was created. Now this leads to a way bigger question. Was God actually created? Now that, my friends, is the right question. Let's look at the Bible, which is the book that God gives us to learn about himself. In Psalm 90, verse number two, it says, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So we know that from this passage, God was around before the mountains and before he made the world. That being said, let's go to the beginning, see what God has to say about all this. In Genesis 1-1 it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, which means he already existed. In Revelation 1-8, God says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to be, which is to come. Sorry, I quoted that wrong. The Almighty. But the Bible says that God wasn't created by another God, or anyone for that matter. He's eternal. He's always been, and he always will be. So the question, who created God, doesn't actually apply to God, at least the God of the Bible. So let's look at that question again, and this time, let's ask it in light of what the Bible says. Let's say it like this. Who created a God that has always existed? I mean, the obvious answer is nobody. Nobody created a God that's always existed. In fact, Genesis starts out by saying, in the beginning, God, which means he was already there before the beginning of time. Then he created the heavens and the earth. See, the Gospel of John starts out with something really neat. It starts out with the fact that God's eternal. E -E 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 -E. Eternal. Eternal means without beginning or end of existence. In John 1.1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that eternal God created our universe and everything in it. Verse 3 of John 1 says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Let me give you an example to help you understand how this all fits together with God. Let's take a look at two boxes. This box over here is going to be all the things that had a beginning or were created. And in this box over here, we'll put all the things that didn't have a beginning things that have always existed. Things like cars and traffic lights and airplanes and candy bars and cell phones and Xboxes and TVs and stuffed animals, all of those would go in this box over here, the box of created things. Now, we see how well things work in our world and we know that they had to be designed. We know someone had to think about it and design it and then create it. Now, let's take a jet for example. Jets are super complicated and there's no way those could come about by accident. Now, nature has things that are way more complicated than a jet. Animals like the octopus or the dragonfly, the giraffe, for example, all of those are extremely complex. And it would be silly and illogical for us to say that all of those things just didn't have a creator. Illogical, illogical means that it is ignorant to neglect the rules of logic or correct reasoning. So basically it means you're not thinking right. I think it means you're silly. We could use the word silly. Someone that uses the word silly and illogical in the same sentence would have to be a smart guy. Everything we see in our world and smell and touch and taste, we can put in the box of things that were created, things that had a beginning. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, Stephen, you just said that everything in the universe goes into that box over there. So why in the world do you have two boxes? The answer is super simple. It's to show that everything we normally see and think about in life has been created, which means it had a beginning at some point. See, for something to go into this box over here, 
it would have to have never been created, have no beginning. There would have to be three qualifications for something like that. First of all, it would have to be self-sufficient, which means it didn't need anything to survive. No food, no water, no nothing. Then it would have to be bigger than time, which is weird. Then it would have to exist outside the universe. Now, the Bible tells us that God is the only one that checks all three of those boxes. God is the only one that has no beginning and no end. He is the only one that has no creator. You see, it's pretty simple. God wasn't created. He's always existed. And it was God that created a perfect and a beautiful universe full of wonder and amazement. He created us too, people. And Adam and Eve are the ones that sinned. And through sin, it brought death and suffering and a bunch of heartache into the world. So I have a bunch of problems that we have today. But God loved us and he became a man, a man named Jesus. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. And he rose again three days later to prove that he was God. Now, today he offers a gift of eternal life because as sinners, we deserve to go to hell. But the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy has he saved us. Every person needs to believe on Jesus Christ as their savior and trust him and him alone to save them. It's not by what we do. It's not by our works that we get to heaven. When you trust Jesus Christ as your savior, God will wash away all your sins. He'll adopt you into his family and you will become the best thing ever, a child of God. Nobody created God, but God created us and he loves you. If you want to see more like this or other fun things for kids, check out juniorchurchlive.com.